Hey everybody, it's an, been another week for the history books for sure. As we continue to be under the stay home and stay safe executive order from our governor. And because of that, for this week, I'm not even inside of our empty sanctuary at our building in Shelby Township, but instead I'm at home just a mile away from the church. And we have some of our old portable church curtains behind me to help with the look of things. And our team, and I love our team, we really put our heads together to figure out how to pull this off for me to preach at home. And I really think this is gonna work out incredibly well. By the way, if you're wondering, what room is Dan preaching in? What's behind those curtains? I'm actually not gonna tell you today. But maybe when this is all behind us in all behind us, I'll show you and I'll take you behind the curtain in a literal way. So today, April 5th, is Palm Sunday. It's the start of Holy Week. And we're in week four of our series, our series that is when the world says fear, God says peace. And I really pray that this sermon and every Sunday in this series that you focus on what God says, and less and less on what the world says. Because the world is trying its best right now to fill your hearts and your minds with fear. I pray, and this is a daily prayer, this is an hourly prayer, that we battle against those fears, and that we would receive the peace of God instead. And that actually, I pray, happens right now. As you're watching this message, whenever you are watching it, wherever you're watching it, that the peace of God that surpasses understanding would fill your hearts and your minds and that God would do that by the power of his Holy Spirit. I pray that this sermon offers you perspective, that it gives you hope. Because again, when the world says fear, God says peace. Today's sermon is called An Invitation from a Good, Good Father. And I want to ask a couple what-if questions. Again, today is Palm Sunday. It begins a week known as Holy Week. Here's a question. What if you were not filled with fear at all this week? But instead, what if you were filled with peace? Not because you buried your head in the sand, but because you accepted the invitation, an invitation that your good, good Father in heaven is extending to you. That invitation, I'm going to preach on. And I want to give you a hint right now. It has to do with what is, with what could be, and with what will be. But before we open up the scriptures and dig deep into this topic, I want to make just a few quick announcements. First of all, I want to say hi to everybody who's been part of our church for years. I cannot wait to see you again in person. But I want to say hi as well to all the new folks who are checking us out for the first time ever online. Thanks so much for connecting with us, and I would love to know who you are. So if you could send an email, maybe even hit the pause button before we continue on in this message, and email, email us so that we can follow up with you, so that we can connect with you. And then we would love to have you check out our church once our doors are back open up, so I can say hi and meet you face to face. Second announcement has to do with our 24-7 prayer week, which, believe it or not, starts today. At our church, we like to say that we don't just believe in the power of prayer, we know the power of prayer. And so during this Holy Week, we are wanting to pray in two-hour time slots around the clock between now and Easter Sunday. Due to the coronavirus outbreak, unfortunately, we aren't able to meet inside of our prayer room in the back of our building, but we are inviting you to pray right where you are at. And we would love to have every adult, every teen, every child participate. And please know that if you go online and there's somebody already signed up for a slot, you can sign up for that exact same slot. It's not just one person per slot. We would love to have as many people as possible praying around 
the clock. And again, sign up is very easy. Just go to our homepage and click on the sign up button. With everything going on in our world right now, we need to be praying like never before. So let's do this. Let's do this, church. The next announcement has to do with Good Friday, which, believe it or not, is just a handful of days away. There is a word that you could associate with Good Friday, and it's the same word that you could associate with the outbreak of the coronavirus, and it's the word darkness. Darkness. But that being said, it has also been said that it's always the darkest right before the dawn. So just like God brought the greatest good out of the cross, may he do it again. Now, the news of the coronavirus has filled our minds over the past few weeks. I pray on Good Friday that we fill our minds with Jesus and with the cross. And in doing so, that we remember what matters most. This sermon is going to be available as well as an entire online church experience first thing in the morning on Good Friday, so you can engage and enter into worship anytime that day. And then just a few days later, it's Easter Sunday. Now we need to remember, probably more than ever as believers and followers of Jesus, that even with the coronavirus, the tomb is still empty. That Jesus still conquered the grave. And even though we are unable to celebrate Easter together, at our building, as a church family, we will be joining Christians around the world in celebration of the resurrection of our King. My sermon that week, in particular, I pray fills you with an overflowing hope. The sermon will be available first thing in the morning on Easter Sunday, so you could have a sunrise service right in your own home, or watch it any time that day, as well as an entire online experience for church. By the way, let me invite you to invite your friends and family and neighbors and coworkers to watch those services on Good Friday and Easter. Because especially at a time of what's going on in the world, people are wondering, especially if they're far from God or maybe he doesn't have a big part of their life, is there any hope? And we have that hope. And so maybe there's someone you know that wouldn't have come to church with you if they had to go to the building, but they will watch the services online on Good Friday and Easter. So please post about them on your social media page, email, text, make phone calls, and invite people. Because the truth is, oftentimes, especially at this time of year, and especially at this time in our lives, people will connect with God if they're offered the invitation to do so. So thanks for doing that. One more quick announcement. Please download the program. It's available right on our homepage. There's an opportunity to take notes, a blank page that we pray doesn't stay blank, questions here to dig deeper, and then a whole page of prayers on the back of the program. So that being said, let's dive in. Again, April 5th is Palm Sunday, the beginning of what is known as Holy Week. And I want to begin our journey today with the events that describe that very first Palm Sunday, where Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. These events are actually in all four Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I would invite you to write down the verses you see on the screen, and then to take some time this week to read all four accounts, because each of them paint a portrait, and all four of them paint the most complete portrait of the events of that very first Palm Sunday. And so to give you a taste of what that feels like, I'm going to read a couple verses from each of the four Gospels to help paint a picture of the events that happened in the order that they happened. This is like a a, just a way, a best of version of Palm Sunday. Here we go. John's Gospel, starting in chapter 12. It says, The next day, the great crowd that had come from the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. Then from Mark's gospel, it says, Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. From the gospel of Luke. When he came near the place where the road goes down from the Mount Olives, the whole crowd began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. 
And then they said this. They said, blessed is the king. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And then they said, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. From the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and they asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And then going back to the Gospel of Luke. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your followers. Rebuke them. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. So again, these are the events of the very first Palm Sunday, the day that we celebrate today. And something you need to understand, in ancient times, palm branches were the equivalent of a ticker tape that we use for modern day parades. Palm branches were tokens of joy and triumph. See, a king would go off into battle, and when he would achieve a victory, people of that kingdom would welcome their king back home by waving palm branches, by laying them at the feet of their king. So palms on Palm Sunday were a symbol. They were a symbol that they were, pro they were proclaiming Jesus to be their king. Now, by the way, before everything closed down, we had to place our order for palms. And I think right around the time we had the order to stay home and stay safe, we got our palms in the mail. And so we pass these out every single year at the mission. And I actually have a whole box of like 200 palms that I honestly don't really know what we're going to do with. But it is what it is. Well, as I prayed about how to take those events from 2,000 years ago and how to preach in them, how to apply them to our lives, especially in the midst of the coronavirus, I prayed a ton and I really felt the Holy Spirit led me. And so here we go. I want to start with a did you know. Did you know that Palm Sunday marks the start of the most important week of the Christian calendar? It's a week known as Holy Week. So today, again, is the start of Holy Week. Now, the words holiness and holy, those are words that get thrown around a lot in church. But what do they really mean? The most basic meaning of the word holy actually simply means to be set apart. Holy means to be set apart. In other words, to be holy means to be in the world, but not of the world. To be separate from the ways of the world, to live in a different way. Now, by the way, oftentimes when people hear the, hear the word holy, they picture, well, that means you have to throw your TV out the window, or it means that you should spend all your time judging everybody that isn't as holy as you are. Maybe you have to dress a certain way and put a bonnet on your head or something like that. But that's actually not what holy means. It's simply a challenge to be in the world, but to not be of it. Holy Week is a week that we should set apart. It's a week where we should live in a different way than every other week of the year. And we need to do that so that our hearts and our souls and our minds are in the right place as we get to Good Friday and Easter. Holy Week is a week that we should set apart. But the call to being holy is not just a once a year thing for once a week. Being holy is something that's not an option for Christians. It's something that God commands. And he commands it not because he's mean, but it's because he wants what's best for his children. That's you and me. The invitation to be holy is a theme found throughout the scriptures. Let me read a few passages to you. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, the author says, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. He says, make every effort. We're called to strive, to seek, to really go after holiness. Not to give a half-hearted effort, but to make every effort to be holy. In other words, every effort to be set apart from the ways of the world. Another scripture that the Apostle Peter wrote. He said, but just as he who called you is holy, talking about God, 
So be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be holy because I am holy. In other words, all your thoughts, all your words, all your actions, be holy in them. Why? Because God is holy. And he wants you to do the same. And by the way, when Peter quoted there, he was quoting from the Old Testament in the third book of the Bible, in Leviticus. So this is a theme, again, throughout Scripture. Going to Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Why? To make her holy, to cleanse her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. One more scripture of many I could share. This is Paul's writing to Timothy. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life life. I hope you get the idea that being holy, pursuing holiness is a big deal in the eyes of God. It was a big deal back in the days of scripture, and it's a big deal today. God invites us to be holy. In other words, God wants us to be in the world, but not of the world. God wants us to be separate from the ways of the world, to be different, to be set apart. Here's what it says in Romans 12. Paul says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul says, do not be conformed to the world or its ways. Now, in years past, when it came to the sermon on Palm Sunday and how to live during Holy Week, I have said things like this on Palm Sundays in years past. I have said how Easter is often a package deal for most of us. There's church, and then there's the big party. And because of the latter, there's often lots to get done between now and Easter. There's grocery shopping and houses to clean and meals to prep and Googling what's the perfect way to cook that ham. I've also said this in sermons past on Palm Sunday in years past. Well, not only is there the party to prepare for, but there are jobs to work at and school to go to and all the commitments that normally fill our week after work. And then typically, I would say, may we live in a different way because this is a different week. It's Holy Week. So let's live intentionally way more than we do for God over the next week. I, I would say, let's do whatever we can to slow down the pace of our lives to remove anything that takes us away from God in distraction. So that's what I would say in years past when I preach a sermon on Palm Sunday. But this year is very, very different. You see, I don't need to encourage you to do whatever you can to slow down the pace of our lives because our lives have been slowed down for us as we've been told to stay home and stay safe. For example, the big family get-together on Easter Sunday is off the table this year. So there's no need to go out shopping for like 20 or 30 people. There's no need to cook for like two days beforehand or clean your house from top to bottom. And so many other things are closed down from stores to businesses to movie theaters to gyms. You can't even get your hair cut right now. And so many of the other things that typically fill our calendars no longer fill them because we simply can't do them right now. So with all that being true, as I prayed about it, I believe God is inviting us to something. There's an invitation from our good, good Father, an invitation that I believe He wants each of us to take. It's an invitation, here's the action step, to make this the most holy, holy week ever. The invitation is to make this the most holy, holy week ever. To set this week apart in ways that typically would be really difficult with everything that's typically on our calendars due to all the demands that normally fill our schedules. But with all those things off the table, what are things we can do this week? So that this is a week that fills you with hope. That this is a week that, that gives you peace and that removes fear. Here's a question. 
How is your good, good father inviting you to live set apart during this Holy Week in particular? That is the question that I want to ask. And that's the question I'm going to answer. But before I answer that question, I want to hit the pause button on my sermon. And I want to just say thank you so much, especially during this incredibly hard time, unprecedented time. Thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity in giving to the mission. You are truly helping make our church happen right now. And that's true now more than ever. My prayer is that when you give, that your giving would not only keep our church going in this time as we ride out this storm, but that we would be in a strong position when our doors open back up, because I really, I am praying for revival. I am praying for just a harvest, for God to move in incredible ways. And when you give, you help make all of that possible. You will help get us in position to have maximum impact in the weeks and months ahead. And so I would love to say thank you whether we are your church family, whether you've been with us for years, or maybe you are brand new to the mission. Thank you for your tithes and your offerings. I would love to invite every single one of you to give, and so many of you are doing this, to either mail in a check to the address on your screen, which is our church building, or to give online at, our, at the website and click on the Give tab. You can give online in a very safe, secure, easy way, either just once or at a frequency of your choosing. So thanks once again for your generosity. Thank you for helping make our church happen. So once again, let me ask this question and then we're going to give action steps for it. How is your good, good father inviting you to live set apart during this Holy Week in particular? That's the big question. And now I want to ask three questions that will help you understand and press into and answer that question. The first question of the three is what is? In other words, I would love for you to take some time to think about maybe this past week or the past few weeks since the outbreak of the coronavirus hit our country to think about how you lived, to think about what you did, to think about what you thought about, to think about how you spent your time. Here are some questions to help you unpack, again, what is. What are some things over the past week or two that have filled you with peace? What are some things maybe that gave you fear or filled you with anxiety or worry? Think about what you did to kind of waste time doing things that maybe don't really matter. Think about how you connected with God. Think about how you lived out your faith, how you put it into action. Think about the things that brought you joy. Maybe the things that brought you some sadness. Think about who you connected with and maybe who you didn't connect with. Think about how much time you spent watching the news on either TV or on your computer, on your phone. Take some time this week, and I really pray that you do this. You take some time this week to think about what is. Under our quote unquote new normal, what has been normal for you? What is? And be as detailed as possible as you write down what is. The second question is what could be? What could be? In other words, what are some things you could do during this Holy Week that are different? Either in how much you do something that you normally do, or maybe you do something you normally don't do at all. I invite you to think about, to pray about, to brainstorm a list, maybe come up with a dozen things or more that you could do this week. Now, please know, please know that I am not saying that if you come up with a dozen things, you need to do all of those. My goal is not to pile things on your plate. There is a third question that I'm gonna ask you that will help you narrow things down. 
But for now, I would love for you to simply brainstorm. And I want to share a dozen things that I thought of as I brainstormed, as I was working on the sermon, to simply get you headed in the right direction. Now, as I share these, maybe some of these will really speak to you. The Holy Spirit will say, yep, you need to do that too. Or maybe, as I share, that will spur another whole host of ideas for you. The more ideas you come up with, the better as you answer this question of what could be. So here are the dozen that I came up with. Again, what could be during this Holy Week? Maybe something you want to do is to read, study, or memorize Scripture. Maybe you decide, you know what, this week, this Holy Week, I am really going to press into reading the Bible like I haven't done in a long time. Or maybe you decide, you know what, I'm going to study just one verse or one passage or one chapter. Or maybe you say, you know what, I need to memorize word for word a scripture like the 91st Psalm as an example. So that's the first thing you could do. That's something that could be this week. Another thing would be to serve a neighbor in need. Maybe you want to put your faith in action this week by serving a neighbor in some way. Now, please stay safe as you do it, but do it. Maybe it's buying some groceries for an older person that you know. Maybe it's offering to pray for a neighbor. Our God is a God of creativity, so pray that God would lead you to creative ways to do this, to serve a neighbor in need. A third thing that could be for this Holy Week would be, would be to make some phone calls. Maybe you think about some people in your life that are far from God, that normally don't go to church, and maybe don't really have hope right now. I encourage you to give them that hope. Make that phone call. Maybe you think about people in your life who are in a rough patch right now for a number of different reasons. Pick up the phone and call them and encourage them. Or maybe there's someone you know who is a nurse or a doctor or someone else who is really on the front lines right now. Give them a call and thank them for just being the heroes that they are right now. Another thing that you may feel led to do this Holy Week is to pray the Serenity Prayer. There's a prayer that's prayed, a beautiful prayer, a great prayer that is this. It's God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can. Give me the wisdom to know the difference. It's a beautiful prayer. We pray it every Thursday night at our CR, which is a 12-step Christ Center program that we offer on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. We love to celebrate recovery and we love to invite you to join us once our building opens back up. Join us on Thursday nights at celebrate and pray the serenity prayer with us. So much uncertainty right now. There's job loss. People who still have jobs are put on furlough. Others have had to take pay cuts. Many of you were headed out to go somewhere on spring break this week and that vacation's been canceled. And it was just announced a couple days ago in our state that all of our school buildings will be closed for the remainder of this academic year. So there's a ton of opportunities for fear, worry, and anxiety to make their way into your heart and your mind and to deep take root into your soul. So we need to pray against those. And again, a great prayer to pray would be the serenity prayer. In other words, what you're saying is, God, what do I have control over? God, what don't I have control over? What's the difference between the two of those? And God, how do you want me to live right now? I invite you to pray that prayer and see how your good, good Father leads you and how he answers those questions as you ask through prayer. Those are your first four ideas. I have four more for you. The next one is this. It's to be really honest with God. To spend some time this week telling God what you're thinking and how you're feeling. See, many times in our Christian world, when someone says, how are you doing? You'll answer, I'm fine. How are you? And we'll answer that even in the middle of the coronavirus when our lives are upside down. We need to be honest. And I invite you to spend some time with God this week. Tell him what you're afraid of. Maybe what you're struggling with. Maybe where 
fear has a stronghold in your life, be honest with God this week. That's something you could do. Another thing that could be this week is to read a Christian book. In addition to reading the Bible, instead of filling your mind with news, pick up a book that will renew your mind and read a ton this week. Now, if you, if you know me, you know this is not just something that could be, this is something that will be for me. Another one, another thing that could be, is to sign up for a 24 seven prayer slot. You already heard me talk a ton about this in the announcements, but again, with everything going on in the world, may we need to pray like we never have before. So again, go to that homepage, click on that button and sign up for a slot. And then one more, to fast from news for a day or maybe more. As for me, Kelly, we watched a ton of news this past week because there has been a ton of news. And I saw a bunch more on my phone as well as on my computer. But then on Friday, which is a day that I actually worked a bunch on the sermon, I decided to fast from the news for 24 hours. And let me tell you, that was so good for my soul. Just to, just to take a day off. Please know I'm not saying to bury your head in the sand and ignore what's going on. But maybe this week, this holy week, maybe you need to be less consumed by the news. Maybe you still watch it, but watch a lot less of it while still being in the loop. So again, maybe that's something you want to be holy this week. I actually have a few more to share with you. Make it a Netflix-free week. And I put that word, Netflix, in quotes, because that could be any streaming service. Don't be like, all right, well, I'm not going to watch my Netflix, but I'll watch a ton of Amazon Prime. I'm, I'm not saying that. What's interesting right now is because of the, of the coronavirus, there are a few of these streaming services that are offering theirs for free. And that could be fun. It could be a lot of fun. It could be a gift, but it could also really distract you. If you might start to binge watch a show just because it's free now. So be careful. Another option of what could be this week is to go to church on both Good Friday and Easter. And out of all of the things in my dozen I'm sharing with you, this is one I hope every single one of you does. And again, invite your friends, family, neighbors, and coworkers to watch online as well. Another option of what could be is to fill your house with worship music. At the cop house here, we are old school. We still play these things called CDs and we play them a bunch. And so again, maybe you'll feel a nudge to do the same this week, just to fill your house with worship music. And then finally, fasting. Fast from food for a day. Fasting is typically what we think about when we think of Lent. And so maybe you do that this week, either for a meal or maybe for 24 hours or maybe longer. There is breakthrough that happens when not only we pray, but we fast while we pray. And so again, those are a dozen things, a dozen things of what could be this week, things you could do during this Holy Week to live in a different way than you normally do. And again, as I shared, and we're, there's an opportunity in your questions to dig deeper to brainstorm your own, your own top 10 or 20 list. And I encourage you to do that. Now, again, please know I'm not saying that those are all things you have to do this week. My goal, again, is not to pile all these things on your plate. There is a third and final question that I'm going to ask in just a moment that will really narrow things down for you. So, again, the first question is, what is? The second question is, what could be? And the final question is, what will be? What will be? Out of all the things that you could do this week, what will you do this week? And maybe you think in terms of what are the things that you could do that would fill you with the most peace. Maybe that's your grid, that you ask your good, good father how he wants you to answer that question, what will be? What are the things, Heavenly Father, that would fill me the most with peace this week? So take everything on your list when you wrote down what could be 
and ask your good Father in heaven, what do you want me to do this week? What's your invitation for me? Now, for some of you, maybe God will lead you to do just one thing on your what could be. Maybe for others, there'll be a handful of things from what could be to what will be. I encourage you to pray into that one. Come up with however many the Father leads you to and then begin to do those starting today. But please know that as you work through your Holy Week, if any of those activities begin to feel like a burden, take a step back because maybe you got off course somewhere or maybe God just wants you to do one or two of those things just a few times and then change directions. Again, today begins Holy Week, the most important week on our calendar as believers and followers of Jesus. And what if you weren't filled with fear this coming week? But what if instead you were filled with peace? Not because you buried your head in the sand, but because you accepted the invitation, an invitation that your good, good father is offering. Because there's an invitation from God, and I truly believe this. It's an invitation that he wants each of us to take. I'm preaching to you as I'm preaching to myself. It's an invitation to make this the most holy, holy week ever. May we, as a church, do that. May we pray into it by asking the questions, what is, what could be, and what will be. Amen? Well, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here again on Good Friday, again on Easter Sunday. And once again, thank you so much for what you're feeling led to give to the mission. We'll see you in just a few days.